All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, hanging around for the last session of the day and uh, coming and hanging out with me instead of uh, hearing Andrew Nason. Uh, it's a bit of a uh, tough competition, as they say, I guess. So uh, my name is Gregory Cornelius, and I uh, am a developer, and uh, technically my title is a solution architect uh, within information services and technology here at BU. Uh, and we run a, a really large installation of uh, WordPress multi-site, actually a couple installations. Um, and uh, our uh, web publishing offerings, uh, especially the WordPress uh, setup, is a, a collaboration um, between Marketing and Communications, uh, a group within Marketing and Communications known as Interactive Design, and uh, ISMT. And so uh, it's been pretty successful uh, for us. So we, we first launched uh, this, the beginnings of what we call our CMS in uh, uh, the middle of 2008, and this was a migration of uh, uh, sites from an old uh, CMS uh, on the medical campus. So uh, the VU has an affiliated medical campus, and uh, so we migrated 136 sites from their CMS into this new WordPress multi-user installation. At that point, uh, it was multi-user. And then we gradually started adding uh, sites from Charles River campus. Uh, one of the first ones, which maybe wasn't the best decision, uh, was the admission site. Um, but nonetheless, there was a lot of demand uh, for WordPress, both uh, from marketing communications, but also from other folks. Uh, it has really good brand recognition. Uh, and once we introduced uh, some uh, features that allow us, allowed us to be able to migrate static websites into WordPress uh, through a script, um, kind of crude in a way, but we uh, saw huge growth, and then uh, that growth has continued, and at this point we have 700 of our official websites that are in this multi-site installation. Um, we also have uh, some stuff that's in progress, as they say. Uh, so uh, we have a staging network where sites that are uh, under uh, content, that the content is in, in progress, uh, there are new sites, or maybe they're a, a site that's being redesigned. So there's another 255. And then we also have our blogs installation. Now, in terms of traffic and usage, this doesn't see near as much usage and traffic, although we have a whole bunch of blogs in it. Uh, so this is targeting uh, individual members of the VU community, and then also uh, uh, departments that want to have more of like a, a classic blog. So when you add it all up, uh, it's an impressive number. Uh, but it takes, it takes a lot of work. It's not uh, something that just happens automatically. Um, so one of the ways that we think about uh, how we, uh, our, the offerings that we have is we divide them kind of into th three different buckets. So we have a really fully custom offering where uh, we're talking large projects uh, as much as $100,000 where uh, there's uh, lots of custom development, definitely custom design. There can even be uh, staff, people uh, dedicated to writing, uh, user testing, I mean, all the different components to building a really successful website. Um, we also have more of a kind of quick setup uh, where we don't do as much uh, kind of custom work um, so that it's for smaller budget projects. And then we have our DIY tools. So uh, it's almost self-service. You submit a request, we create a site for you in the staging area. You work with one of our set of generally available themes. Uh, you get to the point where you're ready to go. Maybe you have a small little conference, you get it all set up and ready to go, and you make a request to have that site launched. There's a little brief review, the site's launched. Um, and you know, that there's a large percentage of the sites uh, we never actually work on in terms of design, development, or uh, uh, content. So just a kind of quick showcase of some of our more recent work and work that's just coming up. So we just finished uh, a redesign and uh, mess 
extensive migration of uh, the library website into WordPress. So kind of an ambitious project. Um, there's some custom functionality that integrates with the product from Ex Libris called Primo. Um, and this site also comprises of the various branch libraries. So this is just an example. Um, a nice, kind of really nice design, I think, uh, is the College of Arts and Sciences. This is their main site. They also have a number of department sites. Uh, we uh, recently, relatively re re recently, relaunched the uh, BU Bus website that integrates with a third party provider that gives us information on schedules and uh, bus locations. So the live view actually has a Google map with uh, icons that show the buses as they're traveling around the, the route, which is one route. Here. Uh, and then last summer, we completed a migration of View Today from a Drupal installation into the WordPress CMS. Um, and this is our uh, primary news channel, the kind of the official news channel for the campus community and various affiliates. Um, and I worked pretty hard on uh, some pieces on the back end, just kind of show off those a little bit. So one feature of the site is that every day there's an addition, sort of like a newspaper, right? So each day has a, an addition. Um, they publish every day schools in session. And so uh, one of the requirements was to create a very curated field to the home page. So I built this edition editor that allows you to allows the users to fill the, the editors of the site to fill the slots of a particular edition. So it's a handy little uh, modal that allows you to go find uh, both posts that are unpublished, but also <coughs> from the archive. Because sometimes they rerun stories, especially in the summer, and then uh, you know, fills in the slots. It shows a thumbnail. They can have some control. They can actually override the title just on the home page. So if they wanted to like write a kind of catchy headline, they could override it on the title that the story would have a different headline. Uh, and then uh, little check boxes for showing the image. Uh, and then the other thing is that tied into that edition is that they can take the edition and create a draft of an email newsletter. So when they uh, they can either preview it. So within the uh, kind of the, as a preview sort of built into WordPress, they can take a look at what it will look like, but then they can also hit create draft and that sends it to the, the email uh, uh, newsletter tool, um, which could be MailChimp or Constant Contact, but we have a little ingrown or homegrown tool for them. Uh, so this is some, some work that's uh, upcoming that Scott Dassey, the creative director, sent to me. So this is for a new camp, uh, giving campaign. Uh, hasn't been launched yet. But it's getting close to uh, And then there's a site for career development. A, the Honors College is getting a new look. And uh, it's kind of a new layout, approach to layout where uh, it's aggregating content from various sources and presenting it in a kind of rich way. So in addition to all this great work of the design team and interactive design, we have a lot of stuff behind the scenes that make it all work and be really powerful for uh, our community. Uh, this is just a, a quick sampling of that. Um, so getting to kind of the meat of the matter, uh, there's a lot of things that make large sites <coughs> difficult. Um, you know, it, many of them are not technological. Uh, there are some that are technological. Obviously, search and um, being able to scale uh, are technological. But a lot of them are actually organizational challenges. And I think no matter what, we cannot uh, just focus in on the technology and expect it to, to really be the, the solution. We have to also deal with the organizational and uh, po political challenges. I mean, it, it, that's I just, it's so important. Um, but today we're really going to talk about how do we address the, the complex workflows of these big sites. Uh, and I'm thinking of this as, uh, you know, WordPress more as a CMS, um, although maybe not in, in the way that uh, someone like Microsoft thinks of a CMS. But for an academic environment, it's a little bit, a little bit more free-flowing. Um, 
so over the last eight or nine months, we've been working on a couple of plugins that uh, really uh, add some, some nice functionality to the admin. Uh, so as far as our design goals for these plugins, well, we want, you know, especially uh, with such a great set of designers, we want to make sure that we blend just naturally into the existing WordPress UI. And what does that do for us? Well, uh, it, uh, it diminishes the amount of cognitive dissonance that's involved in editing a site on, on the WordPress site. So when you see a tab and it looks like the tab elsewhere in the admin, then there's no, you know, there's no, even small little, you know, you get, you're just comfortable. It, it, it's natural. Um, so kind of going along with that, we want to make it simple to use. And uh, one of them really focuses on permissions, and so we want to, allow the administrator to be able to manage those permissions with a full view of the content of the site. Uh, for us, we have some sites that are uh, over 2,000 pages, uh, not posts, but pages, which presents some challenges, so we want to make sure that works well. And then we also uh, are using more and more custom post types, so we want to make it work well for custom post types, too. So let's take a look at the first one. Uh, Decided to call it view versions. Uh, kind of gives a hint at maybe what it might do. But uh, so just a little background on this. Um, in addition to the kind of ideas that we've had and the need, the requests we've had around it, there's been some some uh, discussion in the broader WordPress community around the same sort of functionality. There's a Wired article actually that prompted this. Um, it's really focused more on journalism and also just. Uh, how GitHub has become this just huge phenomenon. Uh, and what uh, Ben proposed as kind of the requirements is that uh, we would have a collaborative editing experience, uh, so ability to have multiple people editing the same uh, content and then be able to resolve the conflicts between the, the, the differences in their content. That is, uh, be able to save draft to draft changes of already published content, to schedule uh, the publishing of those changes, and to allow users without edit or publish capabilities to edit and submit changes to uh, an editor, which then would review and publish. So the first one, that one's a little bit of a kind of challenge that we haven't addressed at this point, but the bottom three, uh, the plugin that we have here called View Versions, to, to tackle this problem. So uh, let's take uh, a fictitious, fictitional uh, editor of our site or contributor, uh, Jane Doe, not to be confused with Jane Wells, who uh, works on the WordPress team. But, uh, so this particular editor has a role that doesn't have the ability to edit published pages. Uh, and so what you see on the left here is because they can, can't edit those published pages, uh, they're not clickable links. They can view the content, but they can't actually edit it. But on the right, we've added this column that uh, is labeled alternate versions, and uh, there are links to create a clone. So when you click create a clone, it's, simple, it's, uh, it's sort of like uh, if you work on your computer, you know, you copy the file and then you work on the new file. And then if um, you work until you are satisfied with your changes and then you can rename it to, to be the same name as the old file. It's, this is kind of the, the process that happens with this, this plugin. So the clone's created, it copies it uh, and provides you with the editor for that clone. And you'll notice at the top, it, it's calling it an alternate version. And it has a little notice that will always be displayed while editing it that says, uh, this is a clone of an existing page. So if you want to go see the existing page, you can click on the original page's link. Uh, and when you publish it, it will replace the original. So, uh, so this is, behind the scenes, this is actually a separate post type. And it has its own revision history. So there can be multiple people that edit this particular, this alternate version, and work on it, preview it, review it, and then uh, when an administrator or someone that has the ability to edit published pages comes around, 
they will get uh, you know, the same editor, but with the, the ability to replace the original. So uh, the, this administrator, John, comes in, he clicks replace original, and then behind the scenes, so uh, this is just uh, slides, but uh, behind the scenes, it takes the content from the alternate version and uh, replaces it, replaces the content of the original with this alternate version, deletes the alternate version and its history, and then there's a new entry in the history of, of this, uh, of, the, of the original. So this is kind of a graph that illustrates how this works. So uh, you have a point in time where the page is created, uh, a couple steps later, someone publishes the page, a couple steps later, someone decides to clone the page, and then we have a branch in, in the history, and <coughs> someone edits the alternate version. Maybe at the same time someone needs to make a small change to the original, they can still make that change and, and update it, it's fine. Uh, and then uh, another edit is made and someone decides to overwrite the original, and at that, that point uh, the this two branches come back together, and we can repeat that process over and over again. So, I think it's pretty cool. Um, now, where are we wanting to go from here with this? Well, uh, of course, one thing that would be really handy would be a, a simple way to compare changes with the original before, you know, in that review process. In addition to previewing, maybe you want to see, well, what's actually changing? Uh, we could also, as part of that, uh, if there are conflicts, sort of like a version control system, we, it would be nice to be able to show those. Um, we want to support cloning of metadata. So, you know, on, on the WordPress page editor, especially if you use plugins, you end up with additional meta boxes that are used to manage uh, uh, metadata about that particular page. And uh, going to build in functionality to be able to create a copy of the metadata so that we can actually create an alternate version that includes things like the like the featured image. You know, be able to try out a different featured image and preview that. Uh, and then a, sy a system of notifications. So uh, this may be in just integrating with the edit flow plugin, or it may be some of our own. Uh, it's not decided upon yet. Uh, and then also, uh, this could also fall in, in the realm of the edit flow plugin, but uh, custom statuses. So, Finally, uh, this is kind of a really nice to have. So say you have 10 different alternate versions and they're uh, all kind of related together, uh, a way to preview it, preview it all and be able to navigate it and get actually have the, the, the whole kind of site exist in a sort of previewing uh, this whole alternate version of the site. Um, any questions or comments about that? So we're gonna move on to the next one. Uh, so the section editor, um, it's uh, so as I said, you know, we have these sites that have like 2,000 pages right now. When you have a site of that kind of scale, no one person is your webmaster that is going through and you know, making sure that every change makes sense and and uh, and and sort of a gatekeeper of all that. You, you have to delegate responsibility to different folks. Um, and you want to be able to kind of control, have them control one section of the site, but not involve themselves in another section. And so that's where we came up with this. That's the purpose, the problem that this plugin is attempting to address. So it's a little bit of a walk through the scenario. In this case, the administrator has to start, start and uh, create a section group. So the plugin defines a new role. Uh, called a section editor, and that role, the that section editor can't edit published content uh, just out of the box. They they can uh, do the they can clone stuff using the other plugin if if that's activated. They can't uh, edit published content unless they're in a section group that's been given permission to edit the published content. So the first step is to create a group. So we already have a group here, admission staff. We're going to just edit that group. Uh, it has some properties. Uh, and then 
uh, interface for adding members to the group. So these are uh, section editors that you would add to the group. So say you had uh, an admissions team, and you know, in this case, there's just one member, but you could have five or six or 100. Um, and then the kind of more interesting part is the ability to go through and have a tree view of all of your pages and be able to say, OK, I want them to edit this section. So I could say, click on uh, the master's degree program under graduate program. I click on allow editing. And they're given the ability to edit published content. Um, and not only that, uh, you know, this applies it to the children. So if you, did, you, you have a big site and you just want to give them access to a whole section starting with a top node, you just click the top node and immediately they can, have edit, they can edit that whole section. Uh, you can still go in and, and deny editing to uh, uh, one of the, just one page within the, the uh, section or a, another section within the section. Um, and it also on the right gives you a little indication of how much content that group had, can edit and how much uh, content you're uh, adding in this particular transaction in terms of how much additional permission they're going to get uh, when you update the group. So uh, I'm going to put on the hat of the contributor. Um, and in this case, uh, we have some of the content where they can only they can view it, but some of the content that they can edit. So uh, as you, know, as, um, you saw, the Ma the master's degree program and this research, major research paper section of this fictitious site uh, gave uh, that group, uh, the admission staff group, uh, access to edit it. And so as a result, uh, Jane here can edit that section. Um, we also, for more recent versions of WordPress, we're running 314, so this isn't going to be available in, until we upgrade. But uh, we're adding a bucket at the top that allows you to just see as that user what can I edit. So these are just the things that I that I have ability to edit uh, and let's publish. So uh, you know, that's just kind of a quick overview of, of these plugins. Um, the plugins are available now in kind of a beta form, and at this point, I haven't published them to uh, the WordPress.org plugin repository, but you can download them. Um, they're, uh, yeah, these URLs. Uh, so try them out if you're a developer and you have changes that you'd like to propose. Uh, I'm becoming more and more a fan of the, the pull request on, on GitHub, so you can send me a pull request. Um, so just want to uh, express thanks to the contributors to the project. So the, uh, the section editing plugin, in particular, uh, one of the developers at, uh, in, within ISNT has done a lot of work. Mike Burns and both Sam and Scott were really helpful in helping us work through the user experience. And then uh, Mike and Alex have also helped a lot. So just kind of within the same space, some other things that you might consider. Uh, the members plugin is a I think a pretty good plugin for being able to create new roles and uh, edit existing roles. And then it also uh, has functionality for um, limiting access to, when I say access in this context, I'm talking about public access to uh, particular users um, that are part of your users pool in the site, and some other functionality that, that can be useful. Um, the edit flow plugin that I mentioned it has a lot of functionality for kind of complex workflows in terms of different, adding different statuses and being able to do notifications, having editorial comments, creating an editorial calendar, that sort of thing. And this plugin ICE uh, that the New York Times folks have been working on, it adds some track changes like features, which uh, I'm interested in kind of seeing how they match up with View versions and see if we can integrate the two somehow. Um, so the next kind of part of the talk that I have laid out here 
um, which I'm a little bit hesitant about. I mean, how many of you folks in the room are developers, would think of themselves as developers? Um, well, so this was some, some uh, information kind of sharing behind the scenes of how roles and capabilities work and how these plugins actually do their job. Um, so I might skip over a little bit, but uh, I'll try to, try to make it work. Uh, so out of the box, WordPress has uh, five default roles. Um, and if you're running multi-site, it adds another role called a super admin. Um, and so these, each of these roles have a set of capabilities um, associated with them that control what that user can do. Uh, so those capabilities are known as primitive capabilities. So they're, it's, it's a very kind of simple, simple system. You have a capability of edit pages, and that means that uh, when behind the scenes WordPress make a call current user can edit pages and it will go check the user and see see whether or not that user has that capability. If it does then it returns true and then says yep current user can do that. Um, so the thing about primitive capabilities though it has no, no notion of uh, what the that user is trying to act upon. So primitive capability is just can the person you know, can the user do this? Uh, in order to get into the, the, to answer kind of questions of can a user edit this particular post, uh, WordPress has, a, has this notion of what's called a meta capability. So a meta capability in this case would be something like edit page. And what, what that means is, so say I have something like, uh, something like a, a call like this where it says current user can edit post and then it has a value there that corresponds to the post ID. So we're asking the question, can the user edit post with an ID of 10? And then that gets passed through map meta cap, which is a function in the core uh, code base of WordPress, which then, based on information about the user, uh, well, actually based on information about the post, determines that that post is a published post, and so then it maps that original cap check of edit post to uh, edit posts. Um, and so uh, then behind the scenes, you know, then the, you know, the WordPress, the user has to have that, the capability edit published posts. Um, and so what we can do is that there's a filter in there that allows us to override that behavior or enhance it a little bit. So what we're doing with the section editing plugin is actually uh, saying under certain circumstances, we want it, so if we're dealing with a section editor uh, role and that user um, is in a group that has the ability to edit that post, then map that cap to edit published in section. So there's one little bit of like one little gotcha about this, which is that with, with publishing of posts, uh, there isn't a meta cap. So there isn't this notion of publish post, uh, which means that when we are in the meta cap function, we don't know definitively what post the user is trying to operate on. There's some ways that we can kind of get pretty close and guess and be certain that in, mo in particular uh, uh, situations, certain requests, exactly what post they're operating on, but it's, it's not definitive. So, well, <laughs> that's no good um, because we really need that. We want to be able to say, uh, you know, not only um, can a user uh, edit published posts, but they can publish a, a post in a particular section or publish a post that they've been given access to publish. Um, so a lot of kind of trial and error digging, so um, uh, find a workaround, so that's good. And then, uh, so as someone that is really interested in not just 
finding a workaround and, and having that in there. The next step really is to submit a, a ticket describing the problem to the WordPress core folks. So there's a, this is their track, bug tracker. Um, and then uh, ideally, um, so one of the things that has been a big point of emphasis really recently with the core team is unit testing. So you write unit tests to show uh, uh, the issue uh, and then submit a patch and hopefully it, everything passes the tests and then eventually it gets into the WordPress core. So uh, that just kind of shows a, a window into how one can uh, influence core both by uh, submitting a, a ticket and then also uh, really contributing. So. Uh, you know, earlier today, John Ekman gave a, a great talk on uh, is WordPress a CMS, and yesterday James Coletti was talking about uh, WordPress and enterprise. And you know, when you get down deep under the hood, there are some limitations when it comes to roles and capabilities uh, that are really uh, things that I'd like to address, or see addressed at the core level. So one of them is that capabilities are not stored separate from the role. So WordPress doesn't, you know, so there isn't a way without going and looking at all the roles and seeing the capabilities that are, are added to those roles and all the users and seeing the capabilities that are added directly to a user to pull all of the capabilities that are available in the, in the installation. So they're not separated. Um, in order to really have role management, the capabilities need to have their own need to be separated out. The capabilities also don't have labels or descriptions. So this is an example from the members plugin. And uh, this is an edit the, the role editor, right? So in this case, I'm looking at the section editor role uh, in my little sandbox. And I can see all the capabilities. But if I'm not someone that's an expert, how am I going to know what those capabilities really mean? Now, I, I want a, a label. and hopefully a description, um, so that I can uh, make sure that I'm choosing wisely. Um, the other thing is that this really gets deep under the hood, but uh, when you, so you add a capability to a role, um, and say you want to set that, that capability to false, so it, it's still kind of associated with the role because it's a capability that's part of our system, but this user just doesn't have it. There really isn't a way to do that through the API. When you remove a capability from a role, it actually deletes the capability. And what that means is it makes it difficult to determine whether a capability was removed or whether it was just never added. Um, and because of the dynamic nature of WordPress, where you can have a lot of different plugins and they may be interacting with the same parts of your installation, uh, that leads to sort of tricky uh, cases that you have to be careful about. Um, so one of the big things about this effort is this is the first time that BU has uh, released our plugins to the broader community. Uh, so it's kind of exciting for me, um, especially since this is our second year hosting WordCamp. And you know, it's unfortunate to say, oh, we're doing all this cool stuff. But yeah, you know, sorry, uh, it's not, you can't use it. Um, and also, you know, the WordPress software is free, um, so why shouldn't our stuff? Yeah. Anyway, there's another real value to it. Um, so if you're, you know, you're an organization and you have the ability to influence the direction of that organization, I strongly, I, I think that there's real value in having the developers participate in in the open source project, whether it's submitting tickets uh, for core issues or working on a patch for a core issue, or whether it's just releasing a plugin that you've developed for your own needs to the broader community. Um, because it, there's really a feedback loops that happen. I mean, even just in the, the little bit of time that I spent helping work with uh, the core team on some of the unit test stuff, I mean, I, I learned stuff from that experience. And, um, so I think allowing time to be set aside for staff to do that sort of stuff is only going to be uh, to the benefit of your organization and the quality of the work you do. Um, 
And the, the other aspect of it is if you really want to make a difference in an open source project, uh, you just have to get in there and do something. Uh, you can't, you know, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of people that are just saying that something isn't the way that they want it to be. And in reality, uh, I think that this quote from Jacob, who actually, he's one of the leads in the Django project. Django's this web application framework. Uh, this is a quote from a talk that, well, it was a kind of panel at MIT uh, earlier this year, where he basically said that the foundation of open source projects is rough consensus and working code. So when you have something that's working, and you build up enough energy and, and excitement around that something that's working, uh, then you know, change can occur. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think just get in there and try. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's not scary. Um, so these are just some resources for kind of getting into the internals or even just observing. I mean, uh, for a while, I think it's totally uh, appropriate to just kind of read through this information or lurk on the WordPress developers channel on IRC um, or follow, you know, sign up for the mailing list but not participate and just kind of hear, you know, be able to listen in to what's going on. Under the, uh, so that's pretty much it for me as far as the talk, but uh, this is kind of what we're up to now. We're redoing our infrastructure server infrastructure for our WordPress CMS uh, to virtualize it and upgrade to a more recent OS and change our caching model, a number of things. Um, we're moving into responsive and doing more mobile, and then uh, this is my own kind of wish, more open source. Anyway, thank you guys. Yes? Uh, question. When you mentioned that what the capabilities don't have labels, you're familiar with like the role manager plugin? Uh, no. Which I'm uses, not. It uses it just uses labels. It says edit post, upload. You might be able to hack something out of that and take it in. Well, is it when it's you say it just plugin, uses labels? Yeah. Is it these labels, but with the underscores changed into no, spaces? No, it's, it's the plain label like edit post, upload, filter HTML. It it doesn't use any of that. It uses just the WordPress function labels for, for, for managing roles for users. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah, it's called role management. Okay. Yeah. And a second question. What do you guys use for SSO? Do you guys use Switch AAI or? Well, so we have our own uh, Apache extension and our own single sign-on that was implemented, I, I don't know exactly how many years ago, maybe 15. I mean, it was very early days. Uh, so it's called Web Login. But it's okay. proprietary. Sure. Um, the direction that we're moving, though, is shibboleth yeah. uh, for the for when possible. Um, right. And then there's also some AD or uh, LDAP, right. and uh, some some of the applications implement this uh, cast, which is a, right. um, um, Micho has a plugin for shibboleth. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Is this role manager plugin? Uh, the, the role manager, this is part of the members plugin. Uh, so if you were to install members, you would get this function. Um, we haven't quite decided how we're going to handle the role management in our case. Yep. Can you put up the uh, <coughs> URLs for the downloads again? Sure. Are you going to post this also? Yeah, I'll post all the slides. And um, where will you post it? Um, so, uh, to this, so we have a blog for both for the web team as we know it. Um, it's at blogs.vue.edu slash web. So these are the, the URLs for the plugins. Um, there's also a post uh, on the blog that talks about some of the ideas. That Uh, well, all of GitHub, they just, they serve SSL. They use HTTPS. Now this is for multi-site? Uh, no, it will work for any WordPress installation. It's just that, um, uh, I 
think for the most part, it becomes most useful for larger sites. But it can work on a small sites too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, I may have missed it. It's just, it just wasn't very clear to me. When, you, when you're working with sections, is that sections only within a, uh, a WordPress site within the multi-site, or is that across the entire multi-site? So the question has to do with, uh, are the sections defined across sites or just within a single site? So in a multi-site installation, uh, do the sections bridge uh, the site boundaries? So it's within a single site. Um, yeah, so we utilize the, the site boundaries pretty extensively to divide, you know, a individual site is associated with a particular department or entity. And, um, so that's been helpful for certain things, but, but for large uh, organizations, so for example, for ISMT, which has 500 staff members, and we have one site that's called TechLab, it's at bu.edu slash tech, it has like 2,000 pages in it, and there's over 100 users that can go in and edit any page at any time. So this, uh, when we uh, activate this plugin on that site, then the Kind of lead administrators for the site will be able to kind of have more control over who can edit what. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, other than like roles in editing, um, compared to like a micro, small WordPress website, is there any other challenges that you guys deal with using WordPress for a big organization? Uh, well, so. Uh, there are certain things that we've done to kind of make things easier. Uh, so one of the things I was considering uh, including in this is we have uh, tools for what we call managing of the sites. So we actually have a separate installation for the for our development sandboxes. Uh, actually, each development sandbox is, is its own installation but shares a database. Um, and the site management tools allow us to copy uh, a site from production into a development sandbox and work on it. Um, and it does that at a pretty kind of lower level. Uh, so that has been really helpful. It makes it very easy to, if there is some issue on a particular site, to copy it into an uh, area where we can really investigate safely. Um, you know, at, at this size, scaling is always a, a bit tricky. Uh, you know, caching becomes really critical, and um, caching adds complexity that requires you, know, you to have developers that can really understand how caching works. Um, because it's, there are lots of little edge cases that you can run across that are difficult to, to make sense of if you don't really have an understanding. Can you put the resources in there? So the question was about, you know, we have this large user base who takes care of training and support. So uh, the training and support are kind of separate functions that we have within ISMT. Uh, so there is uh, a, a group called the Help Center that's dedicated to support. Uh, and we have a software as a service product that we use called ServiceNow, where uh, within their dashboard there's a link and they can go and and create a, a ServiceNow ticket for support. And also, uh, if, there's, if they discover there's an incident, we have any sort of issues. Um, and then training uh, is something that um, it's kind of been shifted around a little bit, but we offer some classes, uh, both on the medical campus and here, that provide kind of basic WordPress training. Yep. Is everything hosted in-house? Do you have any? Yeah, we host it all in-house. Um, there's been some debates about changing that, but because of the way our single sign-on works and some other things, we continue to host and train.
Uh, well, um, you know, it, it's we have a lot of experience with WordPress now, and uh, there was there were problems. Well, the Drupal installation hadn't been upgraded. It was it was like five point. Well, uh, I don't remember oh five or something. Anyway, and so it was even within the five series, it was very out of date, and there were security things that. Uh, should have been patched. Um, and it also was having uh, stability problems. It would go, go down a lot, and just, there were just a lot of issues. And so uh, we decided to move it into the, the main CMS, um, just to kind of keep it all in the same place. And performance-wise, it's been much faster. The editors like it. The workflow for comments was so much better than what they were used to. Um, other aspects are a lot easier for them. I haven't really heard anything negative. Anything else? Well, thanks again for coming to WordCamp. You know, you've been really happy to have everyone. Thanks for hanging around for the last session on Sunday. Thank you.